there beloved ascension pioneers and welcome to today's video together with me this is the third video of this month and i was thinking how amazing it is because what i'm going to share about the principles of life through the meaning of divine inner sacred child and this is what i call the secret birthing of our creation self in the earth plane and the physical plane of reality bringing heaven on earth and it's funny because there is this triangulation principle, as you know, you know, we are being informed first through the higher self. This was like, like the first video, right? Sharing information. Then it was living that out through the principle of the sacred feminine of embracing life, just going into the body so that this higher stellar wisdom, the codes of light can integrate. And then what comes out is always the birthing point is the, the birth of the third or the sacred triangulation born energy which we call the sacred child so what i'm going to talk about today um, is what i received during my run today <laughs> i've shared this with you before many many times that it's just how i'm wired i go for a run it's not just physical exercise for me i always receive information things clicking together things just making sense and i channel uh, information and uh, all this channeling comes through for me very organically this way and i only go a couple of times when i'm really guided to it's just like a guided call I don't do it like forcefully anymore you know it's like um, again this flow of the masculine principles of embodiment the feminine and what comes out is this joyful playful self the divine child so as I received this it really made sense to kind of put that as an add-on to this month's uh, energy updates um, and I haven't done the Elohim channeling for such a long time it's the summer I'm a little bit on the holiday well not like going somewhere but in the physical it means I'm in a holiday mode which means it's an inner mode of integrating everything I've compiled <laughs> during the whole year you know for me it's a lot I bring a lot of energy uh, the first thing I need to share with you today before I move a little deeper into the topic is you know when we ride those stellar or cosmic waves energies they've actually shown me that what we do as members of the family of light we've traveled through many regions of the galaxy let's say we've traveled through many galactic quadrants of what we call the time space continuum although it's not exactly as we see it here on earth it's like a little more at the quantum level okay it's like beyond words and the topic we're going to go into today but we actually go there we gather those energies in order to when we put them within which means we integrate these energies we become as them we travel through them so let's say you integrate a certain ray of energy very specifically you then travel through that way of consciousness you can't travel as consciousness within its conduit which means um, what the natural expression of that energy or that ray of creation is if you haven't really integrated it so they've shown me like this is what we do so we go out we traverse these waves we come into form we bring aspects of those frequencies to creation that's still laying a little dormant or a little asleep so creation that rests asleep <laughs> sleeps awake or awake at sleep uh, something like that so when this happens as as you know there's things we have to go through there's challenges we have and I've explained to you before that the healing what we call this uh, healing as a synthesis point before we can move into higher octaves of multidimensional principles of ascension has to take place on all the timelines so every experience if you think of it was ever held on earth that was ever lived through on earth whether it was through your extension or your vessel of expression that your soul came through individually or a part of the the group over soul in a more complex way but it's still a part of our soul as soul being much larger beingness than what we say the individualized aspect of the soul okay so we have the paramatman which is the the ancient ancient head head over soul okay it's like the the headmistress or the headmaster of that okay so then there's different schools playing out and every single experience or expression we've ever held on earth now needs to come into its own resolve so that the divine child what we're doing here as a frequency establishment through that integration can be brought forth into this pleasurable happy um, joyful celebration of life okay so when you think of your own journey of how you integrate i'm sure you're well aware of now that 
the divine self or that masculine self, the higher self, the aspect that's vertical informs you. And you get these celestial codes and you get more memory and more to work with. So when you move into the feminine principle, that energy, you feel, wow, that was so fast. And I would slow down because the feminine principle of creation is slowed down. It's a slower frequency. So when you come to earth, it's almost like you want to fast it all forward because you've already received the information. Then it has to take place in the body. And sometimes we get impatient with the process. We know a little too much. And knowing all too much is not always pleasant because it's almost like being too informed for what has to then also become ripe and take place in the body which sometimes it's not pleasant for us it's almost like you don't want to be where you are anymore because you already know too much it's like you know like uh, shoot the messenger they know too much kind of thing okay <laughs> okay just kidding but leaving all that aside and truly not because it's all a part of the compilation of what i'm bringing here today is that what then takes place through the feminine you know the embracing we have to go through that information the informative process and the new unwa- unveiling of that dna unlocking of these codes then as you know it has to be processed through the body we've gone through this so many times in my videos but then the aspect where we are now which i call the over lighting experience but not vertically like many ancient masters have been showing the way But that verticality, once you've experienced it, how can you serve with it? How can you serve life through that? And this is what the family of light has been doing for eons of time. Not just on this planet, you know, we've been doing it before. That's what we know what to do. Not always knowingly and sometimes we think or render ourselves to be helpless or, you know, like powerless. But we've done this before in different ways, different scopes, different colors, different hues and tones, different melodies. But still, you know, it's like at the core, it's one mission and mission is always a synthesized group collective thing so this the seeding of that so the verticality coming becoming the horizontal expression i've talked about this before in my mysticism of divine love and how we integrate that in that video that's all about that now this triangulation process today will be all about the divine child what's the meaning of this experience here now so this, this child, the divine child is the recipient and all this divine mana, everything we receive, if we haven't done the embodiment work, the divine child truly can receive it. The divine child is, it's like something you can't fool. It's like, you know, think of an actual child, a physical being, and they say, I want this toy. You know, this is something that the, they're just pulled magnetically towards. And the parent will say, yeah, but th- this other toy costs less. And, you know, it's like more affordable. Let's get you that one. The kid will know, okay? The child will know, mm, that's not really it. It wasn't really a hard desire. It's like you can mentally tell them it's the same, you know, just it looks the same, it looks similar, but they will know, they will feel, okay? And this is not now what I'm talking about translating into the meaning today. It's not a physical thing, but it's like we can't fool the divine child only with saying certain mantras or resonances and words we repeat to ourselves. It's almost like people say fake it until you make it. That doesn't work for the inner child. It might work for you to get to program your systems of belief so you can get to a certain point. But at that certain point, you will have to get really real and authentic with what is still like something that's nagging or, you know, it's like being a little pest for the divine child, something that's still troubling it, something that hasn't yet unfolded, you know, it's like hasn't unfolded the way the inner beautiful child wants because that child is the key. I'm gonna share about that today, what this locks in dimensionally, what I've received in this channeling and my run today. But first I need to like set the ground. And when I say the inner sacred divine child, it doesn't always refer to the wounded child. So th- this, what we're doing now, this integration process is not the same as when we were like still healing the inner child, okay? It's like these patterns of that. Those of you who are now here listening to this attunement and if you feel that somehow has resonance in your life, what I'm talking about now is the rewriting of the codes multidimensionally, which means bringing a new aspect of reality. So this is no longer healing one aspect. This is now opening to broader perspectives of what's possible next when you do that healing. I think two years ago, I've made a video. I think it was in the mountains. I still remember it because my memory is super sharp. I was walking the mountains. I had a green shirt. I made a video about the difference between the healing journey and then the true ascension journey and what comes after. And a new opening, a new doorway to that multidimensionality and how it will transcribe or be translated into our physical world. So they told me today, and a part of this they, when I say they, is also the Elohim family of light, which are the builders of form, the holders, actually the holders of form. So they work with the sacred elements. So if you think of an energy that we would say specifically as the seraphim, which is the sound 
of creation. It's like they're holding sound, okay? And sound just be, 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 before it becomes a physical manifestation. This is the threshold, and this is what the Elohim consciousness comes into play. So it's that it's from that what we would maybe say it's a ninth dimension, then turning into the eighth octave, and this is where these records are held for how to how to write blueprints for creation. Okay, so when we think of it of us as the microcosm for the greater macrocosm expression, um, that code has always been the inner child, and this is what they've shared with me today. It's not that the first journey when we're kind of like we're fragmented. Okay, we're wounded. We need to bring aspects of our fragmented self, the journey of the soul towards wholeness and integration. That's one aspect. We've dealt with that. If you've been a part of my videos, that's not what is today's topic. Please don't confuse the two. Um, it's not the same. There's older videos that talk about that. So now this rewrite means that the whole experience is something we've done before, let's say on other worlds. But I want to say those of you who are seeds from other worlds or otherworldly consciousnesses of celestial forms of expression want to be infused now on earth because before there was so much manipulation, well it still is. But before, because the cosmic gates were not that open, now we're holding them open as much as this integration is now plausible and possible at these higher levels. So those who are seeds of these otherworldly energies, when they're coming in, a huge part of their encodement and mission will be to activate this, the sacred child, this divine child. So now that's why so many children as the new indigo, rainbow, whatever, you know, crystal children, I was a part of this crystal frequency myself. And these kids, although they're not kids, you know, they might be little grown adults already, or the little new young children, they specifically come with a very important mission not to be spiritual or, you know, not necessarily do these spiritualized things, you know, like yogic things. But a huge part of their encodement is that they bring the, the wiring within them to be playful, to be creative in a new way. That's why you see so many beautiful people bringing forth so many beautiful creations and designs that already reflect the new earth consciousness. But it's not like an outside template, it's what we're bringing forth from within. So today they've told me that the inner child, that divine child, once you activate it by creating this triangulation process, which is of course, go to my playlist of Illumin Divine Union, this is a part of this process. So if you are interested, there's a whole um, course about the synthesis, which is called Cosmic Union and Ascension Course, which basically talks about this configuration, when you can embody it, become the aspect of your cosmic self and have infinite potentiality and availability for this multidimensional creation in your lifespan now, not later or somewhere else, or when you return to your worlds, your home worlds. That's kind of not going to happen because if you are a C that's meant to re translate those codes here, you're not going to go anywhere until you complete this mission, okay? And the mission is a little piece of the puzzle within a greater mission. So today they said that this divine child was always like the key, the key for the multidimensional consciousness I've talked about before. What is the key of this ladder, right? The meeting, the meeting point, the meeting space together. But this, what they've shown me today is once you start to really work with that, it's like you constantly will have to move energy, move energy, move energy, because before a lot of the expression that was held on earth was so suppressed because what was lacking was the feminine principle. Whenever you distort and suppress, or it's almost like eliminate or eradicate completely one principle of life, which in these eons of time of creation's experiment or experience was the downfall of the, or the total neglect, or you know, even complete annihilation of in any way or form. I don't know the right terms of expression, but you know what I mean of the sacred feminine principle of life, the mother. And the mother is that nourishment, you know, almost like even physically the mother nourishes the child through her breastfeeding. And now this is coming up. I'm looking at it through, you know, the people signed these petitions and now there was, um, uh, what's that page I'm subscribed to? I don't know right now, but they're always sending you these new petitions. And now there were so many petitions about, you know, no longer stigmatizing breastfeeding in public and just women you know, they're saying, okay, show your breasts just like that, you know, because it's commercially or, you know, sexualizing your humanity. But when you're doing like in this sacredness, why are we, you know, why we hold judgment and prejudice against this? Like people are getting, um, you know, weird remarks about that. And now there's a lot of petitions, which is also in a way reflecting that state that we want that knowing of the motherhood, of, of the divine 
mother principle of life here. So when I talk about the Elohim, they are an expression of the Divine Mother because they hold sacredness of life in form. They hold the reverence of form so that form can expand and just flow how it needs to go as creation expands. So as you know, all this religion and everything that is built around this dogmatic or it's almost like this uh, spirituality that's only vertical and something is outside of you, it exists outside of you. It has created this whole neglect of the feminine principle of life. So when this has been going on for eons of time on earth, life on earth could not thrive because the inner child was not fed, it was a nurse. So this uh, supply of the divine nourishment of light, I, I got this beautiful oracle today um, from these um, spirit warrior cards from Elena Fairchild. It was, um, it's like this divine mother and the breasts of life and the Milky Way, you know, runs through the, the breasts of the mother principle of life. So being nourished and we decide how we will be nourished. We can say yes to life or no, but the galactic pulse of life still is there. It's a constant supply and the sustenance of life. And we receive that. We open up to that through life force mastery. That's why I developed all these courses to help you to get to that level, get to that step, not just mentally structure yourself as a spiritual being, but it's all here. You know, it's not even all in the heart. When you are a whole being, life force is it has to go through all of you so in the cosmic union ascension course i describe these uh, portals and how to work with them so the crown the heart and the root portal so that you can truly embody this the vessel becomes the physical expression of life the spiritual nourishment becomes the physical attainment uh, the resourcefulness that is brought forth in the earthly physical plane so they've shown me the key towards this the new way of life the new expression was always the divine child that's why we receive energy in these little packets and then we work with those packets on each level if you've noticed like how i work is when i have to go through the hard part of the energy integration which is you're moving through what we call the shadow and the funny thing is as you know even with children you will say they're so neutral everything will be the whole world for them. I was just watching a few days ago, a little girl playing in the playground here, how she was moving. And I said to my mother, I said, do you, do you realize that you remember when you were a child, the whole world is your playground. Everything, even if it's just like a tiny little sandbox or playground or whatever, it, it feels as big as the whole world. And they're running around. And for them, this is like the world or even one swing. It's like, it takes them on many rides because they live dimensionally you know then later they're getting programmed you know and nowadays the new kids not so much anymore because they're already so wired for this new way of being but it's like you're being almost like written in the program the code of the matrix but they live dimensionally within and then we get a little older and we start to see life as difficult and heavy why because when you are in your sacred divine child which is the magic spark within you it's the gateway towards the fifth dimension and then beyond, okay? And we all talk about the fifth dimension. There is no fifth dimension without a fully creative, juicy, inner divine child, which plays with life. And in that state, there is no more polarity. So the divine child, once it's fully integrated through that triangulation process of the illumined cosmic union, is no longer separate. And therefore it means the duality is only possible when you're like, light and dark or we say feminine masculine but when that is in triangulation the triangulation the triangle holds no opposites okay so that means you can work with this formation you can work with this sacred principle of life and this design and then in the merkaba expression of course and then in the middle space in that intersection there is no place for duality it cannot exist in a space of this sacred illumined divine union so that's why kids are so neutral. They don't see things like, ooh, that's evil, that's not evil. Even if in many cases they will have terrible experiences or even horrific experiences because they're still, until they're still held in that bubble of neutral or non-partial polarity playing out. So each time we've, we've kind of um, gotten an assignment for, you know, to build a new intersection of that energy so a neutral triangulation process can be birthed through us. And the key when you do the synthesis, when you do the integration as divine child, and you know this, when you feel, oh, I feel so happy and joyful now. And I felt this shift this weekend. And it was almost like after a very, very long arduous process, like truly, truly arduous. Um, it was, I think, almost like maybe a few weeks, maybe not a whole month. And the energy just like, 
oh and it's like the whole circle it's like the the circle warps back within it's difficult to explain but like a circle is complete and then you feel that integration and something you haven't felt happy about because the child wasn't yet brought into this new integration state suddenly it shifts and you feel just happiness for everything and then one day i just woke up as free as a bird and <laughs> without that feeling of limitless uh, expression shifting right into that oh, ooh, okay so I took a weekend off and I was just swimming by the lake and it was amazing and one more thing to share is with each triangulation like this new gifts of this divine self divine origin are coming through I'm not talking about what we already know okay we do it physically people say I have these preferences okay the soul okay we say the soul is just infinite it's transcendent and it's not a part of the personality but i think a few years ago not so long ago actually i spoken about um, the ascended personality because our souls earth as a school of mastery was always to it's like if you want to master creation first you have to master your own creation so that's your divine child you have to master that before you can move on and you know do other creations and build other worlds and inseminate other worlds with you know becoming more um, creative in terms of you know stellar galactic and these higher levels universal um, that means that this is like a playground for the base level but it's still so important because everything comes out of the base that's why earth was almost like this gridlocked formation because life could not thrive the divine feminine principle was so suppressed so the divine child could not become nourished and integrated nurtured so the living situations and conditions except for those few who were holding that construct artificially you know this wealth and resources just for them it was based on separation not on wholeness and unconditional love for all and all life in creation and sustenance for all life so that means that life could not move forward there were shifts there were many eras different things expressions but in general dimensionally it could not start opening up and after the cosmic convergence in 87 with new kids energy starting to, to come in because these gateways sort of align in that way there was enough light able um not enough light held that it was you know the shift was uh, possible so that we were able to come through and many of us were able to come through even so that means that this is the key this integrated divine child is the process of each new birth that we're doing and this triangulation process is like a key that you know accepts those codes but then it's so crucial for why we are here you know we always thought we're doing this vertical work and meditation and all that that's just the preparation so the vehicle can be intact so that each new level unlocks a new gateway so when i say with each triangulation process, you will get new gifts and abilities. They won't always be just, ooh, how to create something out of thin air. <laughs> just recently, I got this guidance because I watched this uh, TV show. It was two parts only. I think it was one. It's like at the length of a movie and it's called Merlin. I think it's British. And it's, I think from the year 92 or something like that. And in the first part, when they're teaching Merlin, okay, someone is teaching him, they're schooling him. And they're sharing about different types of wizards. So wizards who practice um, the art through incantation, right? The word. And then wizards who do with the hands, you know, do the magic with the hands. And then there's a third type that, I don't know, just with the presence, just with the, you know, just being something like that. I don't remember the third one very well. But I've been running one day, again, running. <laughs> and I had this idea, like, why at this time on earth beings who were already priests and all that we didn't do we don't do these things now things we could do you know the gifts the incantations all these you know you can imagine a wizard doing these things and we see it in the movies it's like memory but they've shown me that these things are the the, the lesser level not the lesser but they're like something you need to master in order to get where we are now and this is like the non the mystic like i've talked about before the mystical expression of what we shift just with consciousness you know in the past all these priests it looked like amazing right wow because it's it's physically obvious right away what you do you say word or enchantment comes poof right you do with the hands again poof and it's like wow look at what you're doing and it's so physical but what we're doing now is we're, we're shifting we're being wizards of consciousness in that way and this is the unseen so it requires a lot more mastery and trust because it's not like from here to, to here and it's so obvious and it's physically tangible the result of our workings that's what they show me okay one more thing to share here 
and um, why this is so important like I said before there were so many stories created on earth where the divine child could not be expressed like fully got what it required to create what it wanted to create so you will notice the shift within yourself when you will feel that you are always moving energy because when you're in this expression of the divine child you're moving energy and you're, you're always having a plenty it's not like you're losing energy because there is no more duality held within you at that um, level and it's such a beautiful energy so when you exist beyond that duality it's like pure unconditional joy that translates into unconditional happiness as well human happiness then you have actually managed to translate those codes and it starts with simple things and recently they've shared with me that everything we put into manifestation is choosing what the inner child would choose to create a lot of times we are so programmed with what is spiritual for us to manifest this and that and we haven't really moved down to earth again remember the manifestation process is from spirit to matter which is you include all elements or you exclude an element you're out you don't have the wholeness you don't exist within the bigger picture you can't do the whole framework so you're now doing it in terms of multiple uh, realities in one multidimensional consciousness is not activated here so for us to really embody that to move energy through our physicality the we can't miss out on the inner child which is not like that like I said the, the wounded child that tells you I want to go here I want to go there I'm unfulfilled no I'm talking about how the inner child, the divine child creates and it's so potent and we might say, oh, but the wizards created these things out of thin air. Yeah, you know, really ask yourself, what did this all bring, right? So, so what if you have this power to do that? But the inner child, that divine child is a direct offspring of the divine mother, remember? It's connected with the nourishment of, of the breasts of life. The blossoming of, of all life in creation so it's fed through love the inner child has love and people who are really living their divine inner child they're full of love they're warm people they're always kind nice they're just juicy people are magnetically drawn towards them it's not just because they're such a good embodiment of the sacred masculine or feminine it's because they've developed this triangulation point their child is the way they live is just an inspiration and in many times I'm like this and I know when I've shifted a certain portion of energy because I'm like this and this is what I always say this is my natural state this is how it was when I was a kid except now it's many multiple levels I've already integrated in my embodiment so in that way it's different and yet the, the origin point it's always there it's always the same and I was just thinking this weekend because we went for a swim and I really wanted to swim this year I just really I mean unfortunately I don't have like a big lake to swim in here very close um, so we have to drive a few miles but it's it's beautiful it's my favorite lake there and it's just gorgeous there and all I wanted to do was swim more than in the past was running and hiking mountaineering and it was like all very structured and a lot of pressure put in the body because mountaineering is very strenuous for the body you use a lot of energy and you can get tired then if you go one day like whole day of that walking and climbing and for three days more you're just like oh I can't do much <laughs> it exhausts you that much but with things that are more of the feminine energy, like now I'm doing lots of tantrika yoga and dancing and, and no swimming, it's a shift of energy. Because of that balancing out, the inner child is more harmonious. It creates in a new way. And I've been noticing because I've always thought, I'm not really a good swimmer. It wasn't really important for me to go. It was nice, okay, water I love. I always love water. But really to swim wasn't like, okay, it's not my favorite thing, whatever. And all this weekend when I went into the water, for the first time I felt wow I felt like a dolphin I felt like a mermaid like probably for the first time in my life and I was swimming I don't know almost an hour I guess it was amazing I was making these turns like a, I don't know like I'm a shark or something it was just it was amazing the energy and I thought wow look at what happens through this activation when you no longer have these principles I'm like this or like that and this is how I express you just we are different now when this integration takes place is just it's really different and this unlocks the gifts and when I say the gifts the gifts is not I can you know okay here is here's my empty fist and now oh look I've created something wow okay what does this tell me about me it's good it's what we've tried it was it was a part of the experiment but what we're doing now we're birthing that life is in harmony if you possess that if you are in constant harmony with nature with yourself but you're saying, oh, but I don't have any special gifts. Like, a, I'm not a wizard. 
you are a wizard of love and this is what was lacking in all those ancient times of all these manifestations and all that occurred and brought many um, you know points where it was always from one extreme to the other but this what they've said today the key for this multidimensionality is this triangulation and the full embodiment of the sacred divine child and the way it expresses things the way it creates is the manifestation of this new earth template and our new living spaces our new ways of being and this is so important and people who have gone through all these different you know things and now they're also vertical and everyone now goes to these sacred spots and they're like praying and all connecting with the spirit that's all good it initiates that but look at the new kids just observe them for a while these new rainbow crystal indigos multicolored whatever diamond kids they're just creating and when i say creating doesn't mean you have to build a house or you know draw a beautiful painting the way they create their life they're always moving energy you know even climbing a mountain top is a creation if you do it out of love not like oh i need to go there to that top oh, oh, oh it's so strenuous and you get there it's like what was the point of it i don't feel good now if it's not feeling good you know the children know when something doesn't feel good <laughs> for them and observing children when they're not yet put in these systems and linear consciousness and program consciousness of the matrix they have many clues and that's why they're being born to these parents um, who are learning through them okay learning the new ways the, the softer ways and what feels good and when you rest you rest when you play you play when you create something it's really doing but it's all in this consciousness everything is an extension of divine creation which is you it's it's your love pouring through on this planet and this is the highest form of being a wizard a priestess or manifesting it's not like okay i give you this apple i just created it out of my hand okay you can feed one person with that apple maybe a village but remember how much nourishment you can bring spiritually into this physical plane on earth when you're birthing the consciousness of divine love which in itself within everyone who is attainable who's ready will birth you know they will know how to give to themselves just how it works and i want to read you something here but the last thing i want to say is why this was impossible like i said before because there was so much locking of this of, of the happiness you know people were convinced they just need to work the survival consciousness puts you in this constant um, actually out of body experience because you're never really in the body because you don't even think your body is worthy although it's the most precious gift of life in creation and uh, that's why now so many like i said especially the new kids the new volunteer souls are here to just model this way of like this work okay i have work i have piles of work and everything it's like natural organic creation and work and play are not separate and this is this new organic way and imagine how much of a wizard you are by birthing your consciousness into form okay so i'm going to read you this today from the book earth creating keys to the living library this is the last one of the trilogy i'm reading <laughs> well i don't read so much now because it's so hard I'm actually drawing more i shared in on my instagram for those of you who are there following a drawing that i did just on the day of the lunar eclipse in aquarius which was that liberation point that ecstatic feeling of ooh, just surrendering to that i can create in my freedom even when freedom i feel is not there around me in in the multiples in the collectives but i am a spark of that i'm the flame the spark within that which is like mm, what is this is all burnt out area but that the flame reignited i am the flame reignited um a white butterfly oh no no no, blue one hey hello <laughs> hope you saw it um it just said on my left foot my left finger and um what else i wanted to say oh yeah you want to read oh look 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 he wants to read with us today <laughs> maybe so i love this saying here which says if you knew as much as your higher self knows at this time you would be very impatient with this assignment see this is what i shared before it involves incarnating as a human thinking you are a human evolving yourself into something more than a human and then realizing that you were more than a human in the first place though this may seem backward it is necessary in order for you to go through the evolution of your consciousness as a human being the transformation requires a mass awakening spurring you on to consciously evolve as a life form this is this we're evolving the human bodies this is the true ascension in the physical form 
So this process involves choice as a key. You are going to do it step by step and others will watch you do it and have the courage to follow. So what we're doing now, don't belittle yourself if you think, but I'm not doing anything special. A lot of these new kids, sometimes they even come for readings when I do, they're like, what am I supposed to be doing? They're so pressured by the society. You have a mission if you do something. It's like your ultimate mission here is to model this, is to be this carefree child. Everything you create is the way you do things, the way you sing. Everything you do, you do it through your inner spark so that the codes of the seraphim are coming through the nourishment of the Elohim and then they're becoming more and more those expressions of the family of light that we, we say they're kind of like on the human spectrum of the humanoid spectrum of the experience, which is many versions. We have three dimensional humans, fourth dimensional humans, fifth dimensional humans. Okay, it's all like traversing the spiral and the butterfly keeps, oh, look at him. Oh, he has a message, obviously, maybe for some of you, little butterfly, make your day. As you see my pictures on Instagram, these butterflies are always with me. They're my spirit animals. <laughs> of course, they're always with me. They just love the smell <laughs> of a vegan. <laughs> so um, I wanted to say before that, the drawing I was doing, I shared it on Instagram and the drawing was of a house, a home, because as I've shared with you, I never had like a physical home. So my inner child always felt like a little neglected and unsupported this way, but it actually gave me the stepping stone for me to play out the first part of the mission, which is to understand why consciousness here on this planet is the way it is. If I'm not a part of it, I do not necessarily have the understanding that's so needed and so important for me to get where I need to go with the resources I'm bringing forth through my inner knowing. And these gifts are internal. So when I say to be in this energy of triangulation is to constantly move the energy forward, it's not the same as you're constantly on the to do, to go list. Drop the to do lists. I've done that a while ago and it feels so good. It's so liberating, you know. Uh, do it in the now. And you think, oh, but then I'll forget. No, you won't. When you think you're going to forget, you're gonna okay because you think you're gonna forget just trust yourself and trust the pull of this love within you the love that is your magical child people who say oh you're so magical you're like a magical creature it's because I embody this this divine child and so might you and so do you which means move the energy okay so let's say something frustrates you this is what I was working with of the late move the energy forward through that sing it out dance it out draw something write something okay lately i'm drawn into drawing something that my child envisions and my adult self says oh that's no, 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 not possible this is like this world is not like this it's not this magical yeah because there were so many experiences that were locked into this uh, record memory like this is not possible the magic cannot exist in this level that kind of beautiful relationship is only in fairy tales people tell you that okay if you're ungrounded if you believe in something but you never do the step, yes, that is a fairy tale in a way. But if you are making this real by consciously engaging with the process, doing the triangulation within you, doing life first mastery, and then using the gift of moving energy, you're already the highest form of being a magician. Okay, so the fool, right, is in tarot and also explained these, hello again. <laughs> now he's on my bracelets, loving the colors I'm wearing today. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I had one here on my shoulder on my last uh, nature retreat. Want to go here? <laughs> so anyway, you see, when I, and then I forget what I'm going to say. He's like, you're interrupting me, but that's good, okay? It's a playful inner child. Aw, look, he wants to be in the video. Maybe I can point him out like this. Mm, kisses to you, beautiful blue, white, brown butterfly. Maybe some of you need to see it. But he went on the middle finger, right? So... <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I never had one like this in the video. This is nice. This is nice, isn't it? A little, little, little not so much talking pulling out all the time. A little, little pausing in between, a little breaks. That's good. You go on your shoulder, buddy? No? You like the finger more? No, he likes the finger. <laughs> he likes the finger. Um, yeah. So basically, what I wanted to say is just know you have the gift to shift energy, to move with energy. Mm, what is my divine child? Don't just say my inner child, but my divine child. What does it want now? And just feel yourself being that love. How is it nourished? How, how, what does it want to be nourished? Mine said, I really want to swim. You know, the adult says, oh, but it's so long of a ride. I can't always drive. Oh, yes, you can. Just drive me there. Okay. 
And then when you do that, magic happens, you know, and I was doing these mandalas and I was playing and drawing and this is when you're actually at the highest expression of your life value here on earth. Um, like I said before, it is the fool that starts this new journey that the magi and the priestess have created, but then we get the creatrix, which is a new increased potentiality for the expression of creation. So consider those words a while, connect with your sacred divine child. Know that it is not wounded unless you want to make it so. And the butterfly is really affirming the me message. And heat is actually aquamarine colors. I'm not sure you can see it. Sorry for showing you the finger, but it includes a butterfly, so it's okay. And I was by the waters today there, some bathing, but I was actually putting my feet in the water, although it's very cold. Uh, we have these beautiful aquamarine waters here, as you know, and the aquamarine is the ray of the Divine Mother and the Elohim, which is the birthing of life. And I was just seeding this energy here. And there, you know, whenever they asked me to move the energy, it's always going to be something I would never even think of, something very playful. And this actually moves the energy more than you're just like, um, 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 you know, um, Shivaya. It's, it's okay. I'm not saying it's bad. But uh, let's just say that this divine child, we, it's time for us to trust it because it knows so much. Because it knows love. It is the direct offspring of this consciousness, divine mother, sacred Elohim born through the seraphim frequencies of creation song and us being a part of that song so me and the buddy will say bye for now i think this was long enough <laughs> it's hot enough as well um and i hope it somehow resonates with you whatever you do let me know come follow me on instagram it's great there you can see all my photos <laughs> living life as a human that's what it is you know okay so um, enjoy your time. August is a beautiful month. I really felt the shift. Um, read my blog, okay? Please get me some clicks. And um, yeah, that's it. If you want to have, like I said, there's only a few more aura sprays left. Illumin Union Crystal Aura Sprays. You can get that on my page. If you want to support my work, there it is. You can do patronage. You can do direct uh, instant support. Thank you so much if you're here. My aquamarine, yeah, he is actually, pe mint aquamarine colors. I'm going to show him to you one last time and then, then we're out. Mm -hmm. Kisses and hugs. Enjoy. Love, wisdom, and power. Take care.